Hello, and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name is Alana, I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer, and in today's video we're going to be looking at four more ways to animate your lettering in Adobe Fresco. This is the second animated lettering video that I'm doing, so you can find that first one in the description box below. Animating in Adobe Fresco can seem daunting, but it's really flexible, really beginner friendly. So without further ado, let's get animated. So this first one is gonna be nice and simple. So to start, we're gonna just select our lettering layer here. And I'm just gonna give it a tap and I'm gonna hit duplicate layer. This is just to preserve my original lettering layer. Once you start applying motion effects, those can't really be undone. So I just like to make sure that I have a plain non-motion layer that I can go back to just in case I change my mind later. So for this first one, we're gonna be doing a color change effect. We're just gonna to go to the bottom right-hand corner here and activate our motion and you'll see our timeline will pop up. For this, we're just gonna be doing a shifting color change amongst the letters. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna use a simple frame by frame technique. I'm going to just start by tapping my frame and I'm gonna hit duplicate frame. I'm gonna hit that a few times until I have four different frames. I'm doing four frames because I have four different letters. So that's just going to follow that color cycle and make sure it goes past each letter. Let's just say, starting to color these. And really for this, you just wanna make sure that each letter has its own color. So you can do this color change animation however you like. You could have it so that each color shifts like in sequential order across the letters. You could have them sort of light up and be different colors in just any order that you want. Um, but so to make it e as easy as possible to follow, I'm just going to be going in like a sequential order. So for example, this green E will become a blue E because the color will shift from the K to the E and so on and so forth. And to just grab those colors quickly, I'm just going to be in my recent section. So anytime you select a color, it'll go straight to your recent section, which is really handy. And if you ever forget from the previous layer, you can just tap that frame so that you can check which colors were where before. If you ever just wanna do a quick check, you can always just scrub across with your Apple Pencil, but I'm gonna make sure that my frames aren't super high. The lower your frames per second, the slower your animation will play. So that's a little bit gentler, which I kinda like. Um, and also know that you can adjust your playback. So that's a looping playback, which means it'll go from front to the end and then back to the front. If you want it to play back and forth, you could hit boomerang. So the lights will go back and forth. So this is just a super simple, basic way to do just a quick animation on your lettering. And I think it's a good way to start this off. Next, let's look at our next animation. All right, for this one, I like to call this animation like a squishing technique. <laughs> so you'll see what I mean. Again, for all of these, we're gonna go and activate our motion in the bottom right-hand corner to pop up our timeline. I'm going to start by duplicating this frame. So this will be my end frame, just the letters completely straight up the way that they were in the beginning. But to start this off, how are we gonna do that? I'm going to go to my transform tool here. So when you hit the transform tool, you're going to see this pop up. This is asking you if you want to transform a singular frame or if you want this transformation to affect all of your frames. For this technique to work, I'm going to keep it selected with just frame so that this isn't applied across all of my frames. So I'm just gonna hit transform. So now I'm gonna duplicate my end frame again. I've got my onion skin on, so that's going to be able to show me 
how far along I am in the squishing process. And I'm always gonna duplicate from that end frame so that I can have my letters transforming in a uniform way. And you can do this for as many frames as you want. So as you can see, it's kind of squishing. Now, I had this set to go from squished to not squished. I could always reverse the order of my layers, so if you ever want to change the order. So let's duplicate this quickly and hide one of these. So if I wanted to go from my letters standing big and tall to looking like they're squishing down, you can always just drag and drop your frames to reorder them. So now it looks like it's being sort of squashed and squished and stepped on. And you might even want to add a blank frame at the very end to just sort of sell it. But let's hit play. Now I've got the boomerang playback on still. So that's why it's going from squished to unsquished. I'm gonna increase this Now the smoothness of the motion is coming from how many frames you have, right? So that's really up to you. And that's where having that onion skin on in the beginning to show you each, each intermediate step is very helpful. When you're using your onion skins, you can set the opacity of those onion skins so you can see, you can adjust how clearly you can see them and you can adjust the amount of frames that you can see your onion skins for. So you can always just adjust that slider to your liking. But yeah, I really, I really love this technique. It's super simple. It's kind of fun. It's sort of, well, I call it squishing, but it's almost like it looks like it's bouncing a little bit. And it's just like a fun, playful motion and kind of animation that you can do with your lettering or with any kind of illustration really, and just make it look really fun. So let's check out another way to animate your lettering. So this animation method is going to use the transform tool as well. So let's take a look. Activating motion, pop up our timeline, going to duplicate that frame. But for, for this one, basically, we're just going to be doing a shifting. So between the first frame and the second frame, I want this to just shift, sort of like it's moving at an angle. So this is also a part of just knowing more about the program and what it can do. So under the transform tool, we're going to hit transform frame. And here you've got a whole bunch of different um, transformations that you can make, right? So you can hit skew, for example, and have this look like it's skewing and shifting away, almost like it's about to run a race. Super simple motion, and it's just super easy and accessible, done in literally just two frames. A similar effect can be made with other transformations as well. Let's say you choose Distort. You can make all these sorts of shifts just by making these simple transformations. And you can push this even further. You can go to your Transform tool and you can select Liquify. Here you'll see a whole bunch of different sort of interesting transformations and advanced warps that you can do. Let's say you select Twirl, for example. You can sort of put your letters in a little bit of a blender. <laughs> and you can just keep duplicating that end frame and going as far as you want. This really just works by applying pressure to the screen, light pressure. So they're completely distorted. Pretty weird. <laughs> 
but you have that power in Adobe Fresco. And that's just from making five frames of transformations. So really push yourself and experiment with these kinds of methods. But we're not done yet. Let's see our next animation. So unlike the previous methods that we've seen, all of those were frame by frame. But for this one, we're going to be using path motion. So for this, you're just gonna activate your motion timeline, but instead this time you're going to select path. This will allow you to draw a path on your screen for your word to follow. So for example, So as you can see, the word make is following the path that I've drawn, traveling up and down the way that the path is. And this is just some instant magic <laughs> that really is very simple to execute. Literally can just draw a single path and voila, you're done. You can also use your drawing aids if you like. So you can use your ruler tool to draw a straight line of motion if you don't want it to be moving around so erratically. And whenever you want to delete a path, you can always just select that X and it'll go away. And if you can use the ruler, that yes means that you can use any of the other drawing aids, so even a circle. So that'll just travel around and around. Now for path motion, you have all of these different layer properties that you can use to create even deeper effects. So things like add multiples, so you can have more than one of your word or whatever you're animating appear on the path. You can use growing and shrinking So let's say you want make to grow as it travels along the path. You could also use swaying, which is what's happening now. So there's really a lot of different things that you can do with animation and motion in Fresco. And it's kind of insane, which is why I encourage you to try it out for yourself. It's so much fun. It's so versatile when you select a line to path it'll sort of, well, align itself. So it's not traveling with the center axis in the middle of the word. It's just kind of swinging around. <laughs> so really, all of these methods are what you make of them. So before I export, I just like to turn off my background layer I'm gonna hit that little share icon, go to publish and export. I'm gonna to go to motion. I'm gonna choose my format. I'm gonna choose GIF for this because I wanna upload it to my Giphy channel. Make sure that you also select white is transparent. You're gonna hit generate frames and then you're gonna hit export. Pretty simple. So like I said, there are so many different ways to use animation. If you want to learn more about how to actually upload these to Giphy and start that process, you can check out my other video that I did in the description box below. And since that last video, I am now a verified and official Giphy artist, which is awesome. I've got a whole tutorial on animating in Adobe Fresco right over there. I also have a whole playlist on Adobe Fresco tutorials right over here. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like, share it with a friend, leave me a comment with any questions that you might have below, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.